Ah, uh, hello teacher, kay mga students. So, ngayon sa video na to, pag-aaralan natin yung ating Science 5 Quarter 3 Week 1. Ito ay para sa ating mga students na sana makatulong sa inyong lesson sa pag-aaral ngayong Quarter 3. Okay, muli kasama ninyo si Teacher Bean. So, our topic for today for Science 5 Quarter 3 Week 1 is to describe the motion of an object by tracing, measuring its change on position. Yung distance travel niya over a period of time. So, ito po yung lesson natin, first in quarter 3. Okay, yung unang-una nating topic. So, before that, let's have a review. Okay, so tignan ko mga bata. Okay, this is especially for our students. Kung natindihan nyo yung mga previous lesson. Okay, you will arrange a jumble letter in each item. The description of positive the jumble letters will help you come up with the correct word. So, there is a jumble letter. So, you need to identify. You need to arrange it to come up with the correct answer. Okay? So, there is a clue na babasahin ko na pwede nyo gawin. So, ayan, kumuha na kayo ng mga papel para masagot nyo itong mga question ko. Okay? So, ready? Okay, let's start. Okay, it refers to the force that pull object to the center of the earth. Okay, ano ang tawag dyan? Ito daw isang force na nagpupul sa object to the center of the earth. So, this is the jumble letter. Okay, in 5 seconds, Write your answer in your paper. And the correct answer is gravity. Okay, so ang gravity ay yung force na nagpupul sa atin towards the center of the earth. So we have gravity. How many got the correct answer? Okay, very good. Next, number two. It refers to the change in the position or location of an object. Okay, kapag daw ang isang things nagbago, nagkaroon ng nag-change ng position or location, ano ang tawag dito? May changes. Ano changes to? Try your answer. And the correct answer is motion. Okay, so ito yung refers to changes sa position. If there is a changes in the position and location of an object, there is a motion. Very good. Next, for number three. The measurable period which a condition continues. Okay, additional clue. If the per, uh, sample of unit of this is seconds, minutes, or in five seconds, get the answer. Give your answer, write your answer in your paper. The correct answer is time. How many got the correct answer? Good job. Next, for number four, it refers to how far one thing is from one another. Okay, it refers to how far one thing is from another thing. What do we call this? In five seconds, write your answer. The correct answer is distance. Very good. And the last one, it can be described as a push or pull. Push or pull. Write your answer in your paper in 5 seconds. This is what? What's the correct answer? It is force. How many got the correct answer? Good job! Okay? So, all of that can be related to our lesson for today. Let's discover. Our lesson is about motion. Motion is defined as the movement of an object. It is changed in object's position. Okay, sa paggalaw sa Tagalog. Diba? Ito yung pag-move ng object kung saan nagkaroon ng changes sa kanyang position. Kaya na masasabi natin na isang bagay ay nag-move or may motion. An object said to be moving when it is traveling toward or away from the reference. Okay, away from the reference. Doon sa pinaglagyan niya. Example, you put a, on the side of the table, on the left side of the table, you put a pen. And then, to, when you move it, to, going to the right, so, minu po, nagkaroon ng motion. Kaya nag-iba siya ng position. Speed naman ang tawag, how fast an object moves. Okay, so, 
we can describe a motion based on its speed. Okay, bilis. So, iba bang object. Diba? Yung pagkilos, it can be fast or slow. So, speed yung how fast an object moves. So, we can calculate the speed by dividing the distance over a period of time. So, para malaman natin yung tinatawag na speed, okay, yung bilis, ito yung mga uh, dapat nating mapag, uh, malaman. Okay, before that, Papakita ko muna sa inyo, S represents speed, D for distance, T for time, okay? So, para makuha ang speed, distance over time. So, di-divide ninyo ang distance sa oras, okay? How far? Kano kalayo yung distansya na naabot niya sa oras na naatay niya on that time? So, i-divide niyo yun para makuha niyo yung speed. Okay, we have here an example. Using the speed formula, calculate the speed of a person in kilometers per hour if the distance he travel is 40 kilometers in 2 hours. Okay, so, I know ang distance. We have 40 kilometers. How many uh, are? Ano ang time? 2 hours. Okay? So, ang tanong dito, diba? Gaano kabilis? Ano yung speed ng tao? Kapag um, nadisang natin ang um, layo na kanya tinravel ay 40 kilometers sa loob ng dalawang oras. So, gano'y speed niya? So, ang gagawin lang, you will just divide the distance and time. So, 40 divided by 2 is equal to 20 kilometers per hour. So, lalagay nyo lang yung unit. Yung unit ng distance na kilometers at yung unit ng time na hour. So, you will read this, uh, you will write this like this, kilometer per hour ang base dyan. Okay, so 40 divided by 2 is 20 kilometers per hour. So, that is the speed of the person. Okay, so kada oras, 20 kilometro ang kanya speed. Okay, ang kanyang nata-travel. Okay, 20 kilometers per hour. Next. A car travels a distance of 240 kilometers in 4 hours. So, yung car daw, nag-travel siya ng 240 kilometers in 4 hours. What is the speed of the car? So, identify muna natin. Ano ang distance? Right. 240 kilometer. So, what is the time? 4 hours na tinatil niya. So, how to get the speed? You will just divide the distance over time. So, 240 kilometer divided by 4 hours is equal to 60 kilometer per hour. So, kph, kilometer per hour din yan. So, 60 kilometer per hour is the speed of the car. Okay? So, kada oras, 60 kilometers yung kanyang that's a travel ng kotse. So, yan is the speed. Okay. How about naman if distance is missing? So, para malaman naman ang distance, kailangan natin pa rin ang speed and time. Ang gagawin dito, we'll just multiply the speed and the time. Bumultiply naman natin ang speed at time, yung oras. Para makuha natin, gano ba kalayo yung kanyang travel or distance? ba? In kilometers or in meter. So, speed times time. Multiply. So, we have here an example. The Leah runs at an average speed of 8 kilometers per hour. If she runs for 6.5 hours, how far does she travel? Okay, so, nawaw, gano'n doon kalayo yung kanya travel, di ba? Sa 6.5 hours na yon, kung ang speed niya ay 8 kilometers per hour. So, ang nawawala ay yung distance. Okay, ano ang speed? 8 kilometers per hour. Very good. Ano ang time? 6.5 hours. So, ang nawawala ay yung distance. So, ang formula to get the distance is speed multiplied by time. So, speed times time. So, 8 kilometers per hour times 6.5 hours. So, when we multiply it, ang lalabas, 52 kilometer. So, kilometer, yun yung unit ng distance natin. Yun yung nasa speed niya. We will just cancel the hours. Okay, yung time, kakancel lang natin, matitira na yung kilometers na unit. So, ang distance niya ay 52 kilometer. So, 52 kilometer, di ba? Yung kanyang travel, yung distance niya. So, we'll just multiply, tandaan, multiply the speed and time. Pag nawawala ay 
distance. If you will calculate that distance. Next. How about naman if time magkawang wala? So, when we calculate time, so, gano'ng katagal, binyahin nyo yun, sa gano'ng distansya, sa ganitong speed. So, ano naman yun? Paano natin makukuha ang oras? So, distance divided by speed to get the time. So, i-divide nyo po ang distance at speed. D over S, D for distance, S for speed. I-divide nyo po to get the time. Uh, we have here. A boy walks at a speed of 4 kilometers per hour. How much time does it take to walk a distance of 20 kilometers? So, ang speed niya ay 4 kilometers per hour. Tinatravel niya ay 20 kilometers. Inang oras niya itatravel yun. So, ang given natin, speed muna, 4 kilometers per hour. Our distance is 20 kilometers. Ang nawawala ay time. So, formula. Time is equal to D divided by speed. So, distance divided by speed. So, 20 km yung distance, i-divide nyo lang doon sa speed na 4 km per hour. So, 20 divided by 5 is equal to 5 hours. So, ang unit nga natin dito sa speed natin ay R, R ang matitira. So, R ang gagamitin natin. We will just cancel the kilometer. So, di-divide nyo lang po. Ang pagkuha ng time, distance divided by speed. Always remember that. Distance divided by speed. So, 20 divided by 4 equals to 5 hours. Okay? So, that's how easy we can calculate the motion based on the speed, based on the time, and based on the distance. Okay? So, we can describe the motion of an object based on its speed, time, and distance. So, again, how we get the speed, the time, distance, divided by speed. How we get the Distance, speed, times time. Multiply the speed and time. And how we get the speed? Distance divided by time. So, that's very easy. We'll just go uh, do the mathematical operation of multiplication and division. Okay? So, ngayon, kung may tanong po kayo sa video na to, po kayo maya. Type nyo lang sa comment section sa baba. At if nagustuhan nyo itong video na to, so then, please click the like button. Sana may natutunan kayo ngayon sa pag-describe natin ng motion na at pagsukat ng kanilang mga change in position based on speed, time, and distance. So muli, kasama ninyo si Teacher B. Okay?